hits, goes down. Tom Vial leads the way for Red Bull KTM. Bang! Fernandez! He's like the Terminator, he's gonna keep coming back for more. But Tom Vial, Red Bull KTM Factory Racing will stand on the top step of the podium. Oh! Erling throws it away. Hurlings down in 22nd at the first split. It was him that got caught in the first curve crash. And uh, Geiser is down this time. He was alongside Koltenhoff as well. Geiser responds immediately. Knows he's got a fight in his hands. This is perfect for Koltenhoff. I think uh, we made history today with Gas Gas, so uh, it's, uh, it's amazing. After an action-packed restart to the season here at the Zelta Cirque circuit near Keggans, we're now back for more as we cram two GPs into the next few days. There will be subtle changes to the track for both the MXGP of Riga and the MXGP of Keggans, while the scorching heat from last weekend seems to have melted away, at least for now. Jeffrey Hurlings and Tom Vial ready to defend their precious red plates, but there are plenty of riders ready to pounce should they slip up. Here we are on board with Arminas Jessikonis for another lap around the Celta Zerg circuit. The last time we rode this racetrack on Sunday, the wave section here consisted of 12 waves. They continued all the way through this left-hand turn and they were very high speed as well. And the most significant change now, ahead of the next Grand Prix here, the MXGP of Riga, is as you can see here, as they go through the left-hand turn, they've built up the takeoff of one of those waves, done away with a couple more, and you now have a 21, 22 meter double right in the middle of the section of these waves. So from that side, the biggest change is still gonna be high speed, but will it make any difference in terms of the overall result? right on his chuff coming out of that turn Watson is out of sixth place again here it's looking good here goes to the inside Vial knows he's there probably whoa thought Vial was just going to get offline there and he does go offline and a mistake there from Vial. And Van der Moosdijk goes by into second place. Borome looking to have another go. Oh! Nervous moments for Vial. Look at this, smart riding through the waves and over the next jump. Neatly under the inside of Vial to take over third. Austin tried to take him wide. Fernandez read it well, and then he charged down the inside, and I think Oslin turned his pants brown there. He's like, whoa, hang on a minute. You're coming back, are you? Kit takes the win in race one. He'll take the 25 points. MX2 race two, the first turn, so important. It's a wide start straight, but it narrows up in turn one. It's a 180 switch back right. And here it's quickly out of the seat there. Looks like a foxhole shot for Yago Kietz. Vial second, but he's got Rome Van der like around the outside. Oh, Olsen, oh man, already riding injured and he's only just got going. Borromeo. 
looking for a move down the inside. Good drive from the Kawasaki. Oh, he was brave. That was, I think he dropped his elbow there as well to allow the pass to happen. Matis Boromé, he's definitely uh, pushing the limits. It's Boromé, side by side. Oh, oh, twice. Oh, Hofer is down. And that does not look good for Hofer. When you see the rider sat there like that, you know that's not a good sign. The Zelta Zerg circuit is a tough one, man. Two and a half seconds has been whittled down to nothing. Rowan van der Moestijk, he's got one thing on his mind, and that is the win for the race and for the overall Grand Prix. Jago Kietz has ridden the perfect race so far. Seals the Grand Prix victory here, the MXGP of Riga. Van der Moestijk on the podium again, two second places. Boromé will join him. Championship now down to eight points between Vial and Kietz as we head into the MXGP of Kegums in just a few days' time. New season, new rider. We have Romain Febvre next to Clément de Salle. He wanted some, some change in his professional uh, career and we also were looking for a strong lineup. The transition has been uh, good. We are professional riders, so it's a bike at the end, but for sure you have a lot of change. It's not the same chassis. When I tried the Kawasaki, I felt that I can really go fast on that bike. I don't have to adapt anything on, on my riding style. I have to take some time with the, all the group. They have to see what I like, and I, I have to see how they work. This year, calendar is, is different. Uh, we have a lot of, of sand races. I think uh, to be world champion, you need to be good on any kind of, of soil. I like the sand race, and uh, I also enjoy a lot of hard track, maybe a little bit more. I will um, adapt my training in, with this, and uh, it's okay, I take it like it's coming. Uh, I don't care about sand on, or dirt. I think I'm now I'm good on both. I'm good with the fitness, and uh, also with training on the bike, we managed with the team to keep going uh, really good. I'm not right on the top. Now my fitness needs to be a little bit better. It's almost a year that I've been not racing a GP, so uh, it's been a long time. I think it will come with more racing. Soon I, I'm gonna be a daddy, so uh, yeah, it's exciting. We feel ready, so uh, yeah, it's time to to see uh, if I will see some difference. Target uh, this year is to, as always, fight for, for the title. With um, that change in the calendar, uh, no, my goals stay, stay the same. Anyway, I, it's easy. I take a race by race and I try to have good start and good race. That's it, you know, I don't uh, have crazy other plan. Last weekend, I think third was my place, but uh, from now I will want more for sure. The injury from, from Romain especially did change a bit our, our uh, target, but, but we still uh, hope to win GPs and Clément can also win, win races and be really well uh, placed in, uh, in the championship as he, he shown before. He'll be thinking two races in a row, he's got himself into trouble in that first corner. But oh, Prado's got a problem. I was going to say, I couldn't see Prado just around the corner, and he's got a problem with the front end, either the front brake or whatever, and he gets a good start, and all of a sudden, it's a broken wheel, we're told. So Cairoli leads. Wow, what a turnaround. Look at that battle ahead of us, right over there in that corner. Benoit Pacharel, Roman Fevre, Jeffrey Hurlings, who's just found his way past Glenn Koldenhoff, and just behind them, Jeremy Siwa. Three, four big hitters in this group of riders, all going at it, bar to bar.
And Geiser is down again. Oh, you don't want to be crashing at the end of this straight. Oh! Oh! Coxix all over again. Massimo Castelli looks on. Brian Bogers can't leave the door open, but that's exactly what he does. And DeSalle runs in and they bump Robber on the way out. So Fevre's already found his way through. And a mistake there from DeSalle at the end of the waves allows Jeffrey Hurlings a way into, uh, was that fifth place now? Yes. Jesse Konis, who we haven't seen for a while, has just set the fastest lap of the race, a 157.4 on lap 13. Are you having a giraffe? Probably the most dramatic race we've had. Fevre down the inside of Van Horbeek now to take over third place. Second place up for grabs, you reckon? Oh, it is uh, now. I was about to say it will be soon after that mistake, but then Tonus just tips over. Tony Cairoli getting ready to come over the line. The Sicilian takes his first race win in more than a year and makes it career race win number 177. MXGP race two, the MXGP of Riga here at the Zelta Zergs is underway. Monticelli who grabs the lead. Was it the Fox Hole shot though? There's Mitch Evans in second, third place. So Geiser already in the water. Oh, they tag. Geiser stays up. Fevre goes down. AJ alongside Evans does nick by the Australian just towards the end of the wave section. He's done uh, Monticelli as well. Two for one. It's a good pass for uh, AJ. Hurlings keeps it lower. He's going to get alongside his teammate here who looks across helplessly. Knows he can't do anything about it. So Hurlings leads then and Jessiconis around the outside of Cairoli. Wow. Oh, there, that end of that straight. Kai Rowley going after Grand Prix victory number 90. Geiser, and that's an easy pass in the end. To Sal, oh, a bit heavy there. Back to the berry farm in the morning. Oh, Hurlings has gone down! Wow, game changer! And Kai Rowley's down! Game changer, Jesse Konis is going to win the race. Back end's going to come round on him. Fortunately, he was able to lay it down, he picks it up and see what goes through. Then AJ is not going to make the podium, even if he wins the race. Arminas Jasekonis wins the race. I'm really happy to rewrite again history for Lithuania. I have dreamed this since I was a kid. This is something really special to me and I think to all Lithuania. Jeremy Seward gets second, Hurlings third. Jeffrey Hurlings leads the championship. He's now 28 clear of Tim Geiser after another dramatic weekend here. But Tony Cairoli here, 222, in his 17th year as a professional rider, has won Grand Prix number 90. He has won a Grand Prix every year since he turned pro in 2004. Wow. Here we are on board with Mitch Evans, Team HRC, and for this third instalment of these races here in Latvia, there are some new changes. Well, take a look behind me. That is a brand new turn three. Before we used to go over the crest, but now we've gone up into the bank. It's gone more sort of, uh, slightly more than 90 degrees, and it heads out towards the iPhone jump, and then the run towards the finish line. Shortly after that, the step up has gone. It's now a double and a single over that crest, but there are more changes further around the track. And that brings us to this part of the racetrack here, the final part of the lap. Now, if you can see the city jump behind me before the riders used to go straight on into the next right-hander. But as you can see, there's now a 180 degree right-hand turn followed by a switch back left. Takes us into this left-hander here, which has now got a double jump through that new turn. 
We pick up in the old right-hander there that brings us back over the Monster Energy Hill and then on towards the start line area. Other than that, it's business as usual. Enjoy the Grand Prix. And Vial putting a squeeze on early. Mews in there right behind him, but Watson around the outside gets a great jump. Oh, beaten down on the first lap again. A mistake there for the 172. Was in third place. It's handed third place to Iago Gitz. Oh, phew, tell you what, that's a scrub and a half, isn't it? Gitz. Now up into third, he's found his way past Rowan van der Moosdijk. And Kiertz is going to sneak up the inside. Watson knew he was already on the wrong side there, had no choice but to yield. Ferrato goes to the inside, Langenfelder to the outside. An easy pass for the big Italian. Are we going to see a dramatic last lap pass here? No! Kiertz has, has Kiertz gone missing. He caught the side of Havisto. And actually, Jeremy Havisto, he knew that uh, Kiertz was there. So Red Bull KTM's Tom Vial is going to pick up his second race win here in the first race here at the MXGP of Keggans. Looks over his shoulder and wonders, well, where's he gone? Have I got time to celebrate here or what? The answer is yes, Tom Vial, you can. MX2 race two, it's hot, it's humid, and Yago Kitz rockets out of the line and grabs his second foxhole shot of the season. Vial looking to go around the outside, third place, into second, and he does, he sneaks by Conrad Muse. Uh oh, Conrad Muse under attack. So the 426, lead rider in shot, he's got three riders chasing him down. The number 14 of Jed Beaton, the 959 of Maxim Renault, and the 39 of Rowan van der Moosdijk. Beaton tries to force his way down the inside of the Englishman, and he does. Renault around the outside of Muse. Finds a way past Beaton. Beaton might get the better momentum, though, through the waves. They're going to be side by side as they launch in. But the, uh, the Frenchman, Renault, does hold on and he does execute the move perfectly. But Van der Moosdijk goes around the outside just to make sure as he moves up behind Renault into fourth place. Oh. Man, he got hit in the head with the back wheel. He took the whole 100 kilos of bike. Yago Hitz wins race two. He takes the overall victory as well. A second and a first, trades positions with Bial. Roman Amostijk on the podium for the third time. Three podiums here in Latvia for the Dutchman. Eight points between Tom Vial and Yago Hitz as Roman van der Moosdijk moves up to third. Tom Vial, second overall, Red Bull KTM factory racing. And the overall win belongs to Yago Hitz. Tom Vial though, your championship leader. He maintains his grip on that red plate.
Cairoli is in there, and Tonus is down there. So Geiso has found his way past Monticelli. C was down as well. So it's C that's down in turn three. Good to see C were picking himself up. Prado nips under the inside of Monticelli and takes second away. And Tony Cairoli. So Cairoli in 20th place, having gone down at the first turn, picks himself up. Who else is out of the points at the moment? Prado. Oh, he just lost the front himself. And then Cairoli into the back. It's AJ looking to go around Monticelli. And he does. So all of a sudden, Rockstar Energy has found a rider now up in the third place. Battling as Hurlings does get the better of Commander Sal this time around. Finally, Hurlings goes through on Monticelli. And uh, the battle for second has been decided. Jess Aconis has found his way past Prado. Just in the right hand up, just trying too hard, picks himself up. And Fevre has found his way past De Sal. Jeffrey Hurlings, as uh, he now goes around the outside of Monticelli. So that'll give him another two points. So that move him to 188. Oh, AJ had to react quick mid-air to save that. But Tim Geiser, Team HRC, heads towards the Monster Energy finish line. He wins race one, his fourth race win of the season. And for Tim Geiser, that's his 49th career race win. Kai Rowley, though, it is who leads coming out of turn two. Was it a foxhole shot for him, yes or no? And Geiser goes around the outside to lead here at the very first time of Askin. It Hurlings cuts to the inside, finds his way past the young Spaniard. Wow, that was uh, quite a big, significant distance change. And he goes past Kai Rowley as well. <laughs> Hurlings was the fastest man on track. And he's alongside, keeping it nice and low. Takes the lead, but Geiser may respond here at the end of the straight. This is where he had his biggie on Wednesday. Caroni looking frustrated here. Second rider in shot, 2.22, as he tries to go by. Not at all. This time, he executes the pass perfectly. <laughs> Great action by the two Red Bull KTMs. And Geiser has fallen. Coming out of that bottom corner, Cairoli is going to go through, is he or not? Cairoli, Cairoli will run up the inside of the Slovenian here, though. But he's using that nice there, just using that hole to pre-jump over the hill. And it's gained him some time as well, and he goes after, and he's alongside Geiser, who takes a look across. Gives him a little bit of side-eye vision. Jasikonis on the podium, as it stands right now, third on 42 points. AJ looking like he's fading. Geiser's bike! There he is, he's parked. The bike will not fire up. He can't believe it. That is disastrous for him and the team. Hurlings finally wins the race again. He finally wins the Grand Prix again. Jasikonis, a career best, second overall. Prado on the podium for the first time in MXGP. Hurlings now on 2-1-3. That's 46 points clear of Tim Geiser.
what a way to bring the curtain down on an historic triple header here at the Zelta Cert Circuit in Latvia for the MXGP of Kegums. Jeffrey Hurlings finally climbed onto the top step of the MXGP podium and extended his championship lead thanks to Tim Geiser being stopped in his tracks by technical gremlins. Meanwhile, in MX2, it's as you were at the top of the standings. Yago hits with a second successive GP victory, but Tom Vial retaining his eight-point lead. We'll now pack up and we'll see you very soon at the sixth round of the 2020 FIM Motocross World Championship.